Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and fucking clear. Hold on, I'm bringing in a guy to be like, um... Why can't I hear you? Oh shit, he can't hear me. Hey, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yes. I can, hello. Hold on one sec. I have like, um... You know how Kane Peel did the, like, the nice Obama, bad Obama skit? Yeah, I know the one. Okay, I have a guy that's like my nice Obama, so I'm bringing him in. Okay. He's here to help okay. me, help my brain. <laughs> All right. Hi guys. Am, Hi, why am, am I am I the baddie now, Destiny? No, I'm the bad guy, and he's the good part that's trying to help me not okay. be the bad guy. Okay. 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 I'm engaging you in a good faith, high octane, high IQ argument, where we're I'm going to be nice. careful with what I say, and I'm going to be very patient. Okay. Let's go. Um, you don't. Uh, you, you don't have to afford me any uh, special courtesies. I wanna. I wanna have the worst of it. Well, I, the worst the, of it give, is give on me the Twitter. Super okay. Scene. All right. Yeah, I know. I saw it. Okay. So, all right. What do you? Um. What do you? Okay. What do you got? Where Where are you at right now? <laughs> on the uh, Kenosha uh, thing. Where am I at? Yeah, on the Kenosha thing. I'm, Hit me up. What do we got? Um. Well, what do you want the jumping off point to be? Do you, do you want to start talking about how um, I think he was morally or not morally justified in what he did? It wasn't even an argument that I was entertaining before this whole rabbit hole oh. started, to be honest. Well, what yeah. were you? Um, what parts were you uh, at? And I'll meet you where you're at. We can, yeah, and then I'll see if we need to back up anymore. Um, okay, so we had a kid who crossed state lines. I understand that it was only about a 10-minute drive, but mm -hmm. still crossed state lines with a firearm that he was not legally allowed to possess. Mm -hmm. uh, he entered an area to protect someone else's property. Um, his official, uh, the deposition of his lawyer, well, sorry, not deposition, but the statement of his lawyer says that he had received or they had received a call for help, whether that be through a, an internet Facebook post or an actual phone call. It's not stipulated. He then decided to go across state lines and defend that property. Uh, and then the footage from what anyone can tell from the blurry footage is that there was a gunshot fired. He then fired a gunshot. He killed a person. He got on the phone and said, hey, I've shot someone. And then other people saw him and started to chase after him. And they were trying to grab his weapon and hit him in the I don't know, shoulder with a skateboard. And he shot two of them dead um, and injured a third. That's pretty much my, my recap. Um, close enough. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so where do we disagree there? Well, <laughs> do you think the um, based on the footage that we saw? So, okay, mm -hmm. well, I'll take I'll state my position. Okay, here we go. Sure. My position is I believe that the first shooting I think was totally morally justified in terms of the kid felt threatened. The other guy was presenting a clear and present danger. I think it was fair for him to feel threatened. Feel like that shooting was in self defense. Um, can, and then, can I pause it? Can I pause it there? Yeah, go for it. Um, why? Um, yeah, okay, yeah, or we can go, um, I'm, I'm gonna further well, it's, argue It's that. easier for me. I, like, no, 100%, I, I agree. Um, I'll just, yeah. I'll just state my, like, my overall view, and then we can go point by point, sure. And then I think the next shootings were all in self-defense as well. Not too much more, but yeah, sure. okay. Um, okay, so, um, yeah, so starting from, from the very first thing we see, um, it appears as though you have a kid that's running away, um, seems to be holding an assault rifle. You have another guy that's chasing after him for some seconds, um, eventually, a shot is fired behind um, the the two of them. The one guy, um, I need to remember this guy's name, is Chasing Kyle. What's the name of the guy, Chasing Kyle? Do you remember? Rosenbaum. Rosenbaum. Yeah, Rosenbaum. Rosenbaum, I think, right? It's Chasing Kyle. Kyle and Rosenbaum hear a shot behind them. Um, the, the Rosenbaum throws a bag or something at Kyle. Kyle turns around. The guy screams, fuck you. Um, and then Kyle shoots him, I believe, four times. Um that's the first shooting. Uh, I, I think that, like, from from looking at it, if you've got a guy that's clearly chasing after you, you hear somebody else mm -hmm. shoot a shot behind you, um, you turn around, the, like, you have a full-on adult male is still chasing you, I think it's fair to assume that there's a possibility this guy presents, like, serious bodily harm to you, um, and I think it's totally fair to defend yourself in that circumstance. Mm -hmm. But, like, neither of us know what happened right before that shot, right? Like, what, what he had been doing before that moment. Like, that's it's all speculation at this point, right? Um, yeah, while that's true, um, I would say that I would have to imagine some fantastical scenarios that justify him being chased for as long as he was um, by a, another guy acting that aggressively. Um, it's possible, but that, that that would be like a that would be like a low percentage, single digit percentage, like scenarios I can think of where that's happening. 
so in your version of the narrative, do you think he was being chased based solely on the fact that he was an outsider with a gun? Was he like a white guy with a gun? Was he a young kid with a gun? Was he in an area where he shouldn't have been? And they if I if I had to, of that? Um, it's really hard to say. There, like I can think of several plausible scenarios. Um, if I had to guess, uh, like there are multiple scenarios of equal likelihood. Maybe they were just mad that he was there with a gun. Um, maybe a couple protesters were arguing with a couple militia people and somebody singled out Kyle. Maybe somebody said something to him or he said something to somebody else. People thought it was escalating. Like There are several circumstances where it's possible. Yeah, the words were exchanged or whatever, and then it led to that, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so based on that, neither of us know what happened before that, but we do know that a shot was fired and that he ended up killing someone and you think he was doing it proportional thinking that that person was going to attack him. Um, I'm not comfortable with the word proportional because I don't believe that proportionality is like an important part of self-defense. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't think most people do. Do you want to talk about that or? Well, okay. Hey, mm -hmm. I'm going to say this right out of the gates because yeah. I'm very honest about these things. Mm -hmm. I'm not an armchair detective. Like when I go down these rabbit holes, and this mm -hmm. one I went down ob obviously pretty strongly because of you and then and, and the Vosh debate and everything that came from that. Mm -hmm. um, it's me on the sidelines trying to do the best I can to piece this together when this is like, I like I don't even pretend to be an armchair like politician or sorry, like pundit, right? Like I'm, I'm a guy on the internet who talks on Twitch. Mm -hmm. So Everything I'm piecing together is, is what I'm trying to do. I'm doing my best to, to reading these kind of documents, right? So I will be woefully out of my depth. If you want to come in here and you want to be like, Lance, can we go back and forth on each detail until we figure out what exactly sure. happened? Sure, so, like, yeah, so to be super know? clear on this, I actually don't think that what happened prior to the video footage we've seen is that relevant. Um, let me be clear. When I said earlier that I could fantasize some scenarios, I'm thinking like Kyle literally says like, I'm going to run 30 yards away, turn around and start shooting all of you guys. Like, even if Kyle displayed some aggressive manner or said some fucked up shit or whatever i still don't know if that ever justifies chasing him for as far as he did um when the when i, I don't i don't know how you could justify that that just seems insane to me like typically once somebody's running away you usually like you back off you're done that that's what i would consider mm -hmm. um but but I, even if that happened, I think those would be the majority cases. The or I'm sorry, the min minority of scenarios. It seems more likely that the other guy just appears to have been acting very aggressively, especially based on the other videos we've seen at this point. I I know you're super busy on vacation. Did you get mm -hmm. a chance to watch Riley Grace Rawshong's video on the subject? She no. One that was like. No. Nope. What did she say? Okay. You can give me okay, your argument. So she's. Okay. Sure. Well, I can't because it's like an hour and twelve minutes. But she actually went through. All of the, the different like case laws, statute laws, the the like specific laws to Kenosha, mm -hmm. um, and like broke the whole thing apart and, and itemized it for for like people like me who again I'm on mm -hmm. the sidelines on this right mm -hmm. and like time and time again the conclusions she was coming to and again she's just like she's a law student she does not try to like mm -hmm. give legal advice or anything like that was that he did not have justification in terms of the so yeah so there's this particular scenario there's two things here um one i'm making moral arguments not legal arguments two i'm very curious what she would have mm -hmm. thought about ben shaver because the cop that murdered him was completely acquitted of all charges so I'm not really concerned about the, the legal argument because I don't believe that whatever a court decides is necessarily the moral outcome. Um, as we've seen mm -hmm. time and time again, if BLM teaches us anything, it's that oftentimes the legal outcomes aren't necessarily the moral ones. And then also I'm just I'm more interested in the moral argument here because I believe even if people say other things, I believe that most people um, most people are more interested in the moral argument of defending yourself rather than are you legally justified in doing so. I'm sorry, wait, Daniel Shaver. What did I say? Did I say Ben Shaver? Okay, never mind. Sorry. Um, yeah, but um, keep going. Okay, so so when, it, so when it comes down to it, you don't want to talk about the legal standpoint. You just want to talk about whether or not he's yeah, was he was he morally justified in defending yeah in defending himself? Yeah. Wait, did okay. I say Ben and Shapiro? Did, I... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> keep going. I, it's people are saying dumbass shit in chat. Sorry. Keep going. <laughs> All right. Um, but anyways, yeah, if, if you're just asking my opinion, because that's that's the basis of what you want to get out here, because mm -hmm. I, I think you want to talk about property more than you want to talk about this, right? Um, well, but if I, you're asking about the yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and I I and we'll go down that. Mm -hmm. Um. But if you're asking about the basis of whether or not I think I was, he was morally justified, I personally don't. Like, I, I, say, I say no uh, for a handful of reasons. One, uh, I don't think he was defending property that belonged to him. If you're going to say, Lance, uh, you own a mom and pop operation and you're standing in front of it because there's riders coming towards your like store and you want to defend your mom and your dad, either mm -hmm. them or the property, that's one case. 
Uh, the other case being if, if you want to travel to somewhere else to defend a stranger's property, that to me is you're, you're kind of defending uh, like an ideology of property, right? Like the idea that all property is under assault within these communities and I have to defend them um, because... Wait, know, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wait, so let's go through yeah. this right now. Do you think that it's sure. ever valid that you might want to defend property in your community that either you or your family doesn't directly own? Um, under the threat of death. What do you mean by that? Like, do I think someone has a right to kill someone else over property that they don't own? Yeah. My, okay, my answer is that that would be no, I don't. So let's say, for instance, um, uh, I'll, I'll throw up one historical example. Let me go through hypotheticals. Do you think sure. that, like, the Korean communities that were defending their stories during the L.A. riots, do you think that they should have just let their communities be burned to the ground? Uh, no, but again, they were defending their stores, right? Not no for a, a lot the majority of those people there were like part of the like the Korean community and not every single Korean there was like a community property owner but let but let's oh, even so assume you're, that, so you're saying yeah. this as a collective so as, as yeah. a collective Korean community they all had a right to shoot mm -hmm. because they were forming a, a small militia if you will yeah right like it, mm -hmm. it, I guess it applies here right a militia if you will and so you're saying that applies to the same scenario where a kid drove well no no I, I'm not even I'm not even going that far I'm just very very okay. very simple very yeah. direct. Do you think that like the Korean people during the LA race riots, that that community was okay to step mm -hmm. up and defend those stores or should they have let them be burned to the ground? I don't think you can apply a yes or no answer to this. I think my, and I'm not trying to be Weasley. My answer to this would be, it depends on a case by case basis. It depends. Like if one guy was in a community that was like blocks away, barely knew anyone and he showed up and he just wanted to like defend his favorite, like, I don't know, uh, the store that, that was uh, to his liking. That's different to me than someone who's like, I'm def directly defending my mom and pop store or my neighbor's mom and pop store or my close relative's mom and pop store. Like there, it's not, there can't be a, a one size fits all answer to this. Okay. I'm not looking for a one size fits all. So that's why I've got a very, very, very split. I'm not asking you to extrapolate to anything else or to make any absolute yeah. moral. I'm just saying in this particular case, if there is a community of people who feel threatened, do you think that they have a yes. right to band together as a community to defend their property against other people that would have that property destroyed? And that I'm using the Koreans during the LA race riots that camped on mm -hmm. top of their roofs with rifles to threaten people that would attack their property. Yeah, I, I would say it would be case specific. Okay, in this case, would you say that that's a, like a morally justifiable position if they were to kill somebody that would come to set their stores ablaze? It, so, in your specific case, mm -hmm. I don't know every single situation involving that, right? Like in, during the Korean riots, can you paint it for me? Was was there an instance where one person was this? Who, I think like, was fucking it was, it, was it, was it, it was like Rodney King or whatever. There were a whole bunch of people rioting. L.A. was like burning to the no, ground. I, I, over I know 60 the people history killed. of the L.A. riots. I'm, yeah, I'm asking you. You're you're asking specifically about the Korean stores, right? So I want yeah, to know. So what? It, what, it, what my stores. yeah. So yeah. like basically, a few Koreans they own some stores. They put out like a call to their community, like guys, shit is getting crazy. We really don't want our businesses burned to the ground. These are family owned businesses. Like this is our life's work. Like can you guys please like you know grab a few guns, go to whatever's house like. Like show up let's like defend our property to make sure that people don't come and like destroy our shit because this is all we have sure sure um i think if you're endangering their personal lives if you're endangering like their personal like the fr the families all, all of that yes you have the right to defend yourself do you have a right to defend yourself against the property that you don't personally own i personally say no that's that's my standpoint so then if you have to watch other people in your community so like there's two koreans that that go do you think it's unethical for them to ask for help do you think that like communities can never like defend each other in that sense that they just have to sit by and watch only individuals go by and defend their property so are they allowed to call for help if someone's like attacking them personally? Yeah, like are they allowed to call for help? Like other examples that I could think of yeah, this, of course, maybe it would course, be like disproportionate. Like, like what about like, um, fuck, what's it called? Was it Kristallnacht? Um, I only know about this because of the dumb Nazi shit I read. But basically it was the night in um, Nazi Germany where um, they basically said like, hey, if you guys want to go fuck up Jewish property, listen. I'm not mm -hmm. telling you to do it, but if you do it, we're not going to do shit about it. Do you think in that case, like Jewish people would have had a right to, to call out to their community, even if they didn't directly own property and have guns and defend it against like would be destroyers or for Black Wall Street? Do you think they had a right to call people to help against would be, you know, white attackers destroying their property? Do you think in general it's OK for people that don't directly own property to show up and help so, defend community so property? Yeah. Right. So so this comes down to how do we define community? Because in this example, because if it all boils mm -hmm. down to Kenosha, I, I would like to know in your 
definition mm -hmm. how does his idea of community pertain to that property that yeah it seemed like kenosha like... was a community that he belonged to it was like a, it was like a okay. community of people that he knew i think he was a lifeguard there like it's like the area that he grew up in like yeah it's a, as much a community as like any other person would say like i belong to this community so in that case he has a right to take up arms for a third person's property like i can go over to a gas station and defend it yeah but it's like yeah if it's part of the community I, I mean i could argue i would argue that you could actually go further than that but we're not at that level um but like just for in terms of like just being this community like yeah i think he has a like a standing there like yeah this is my community i belong to it like yeah what what makes that community just out of curiosity um, I mean, like, it gets hard to specifically define, but I would imagine that's like some group of people that you probably are familiar with that you see on a daily basis that you've grown up with that you know, like, oh, yeah, like, I know the guy that owns that gas station. I know, like, his daughter. I know the family that runs this area. Like, oh, yeah, like, I've been on that street a ton. We know these people. Like, it's probably like the people that you grew up around and, like, are closely associated with and affiliated with growing up. Yeah. If it turned out that he didn't actually know any of these individuals, because we don't know, you and me don't know, but it turns out he doesn't know any of them. He was just going there for the idea of policing another community would you still stick to that argument would you still say that was an um like, we're not at that proper way behaving we're not at that level i, I, know, I asking, would i'm asking i I'm would yeah i would but i want to see if i can get you on this first one for not get you but i'm just curious sure. if you agree this very first level yeah, yeah, first yeah. yeah sure like so yeah so like because so like he worked in a, as a lifeguard in kenosha like it's like a community that was pretty close by um to to, to use an example of my own life i grew up like in omaha nebraska and there's a city in mm -hmm. iowa it's like 20 minutes away. It's Council Bluffs. But I wouldn't say that these are like totally separate, completely separate areas. Like you can live like 15, 20 minutes away from an area and like kind of grow up next to each other and be affiliated with communities. Like that's totally possible. So sometimes to like city people, like living, you know, 15 miles away or 10 miles away, that seems like a world apart. But in rural communities, like it's not necessarily like that crazy to imagine that like 15 minutes away is like a, a community that you grew up in. But yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But sorry, you, you were talking about Nebraska because you want to bring in the fact that like... I understand. I, I, I'm thinking, and I don't want to like steel man you here, but mm -hmm. I'm thinking you, you think the idea that I'm talking about property in this respect, that I don't think someone should die um, trying to defend a television or a car radio or something like that, that comes from kind of like a privileged position where I can afford to buy another TV. Like my TV is not my entire life. You know? Well, no, I'm like, just, I, I want to make sure I'm drawing a careful distinction between like, should you do something that maximizes your versus like, are you morally justified for it? Like, for instance, if I thought that if I was in the process of getting raped, I would probably let it happen. But if somebody wanted to fight back and try to kill their rapist i think they're morally justified in doing so even if that's probably not like the smartest decision right like uh but th those are two totally separate things and i don't want to get into the like you know should you to maximize your life we could talk about that i'm just talking about like are you morally justified in doing it like do you have moral standing there does that make sense yeah I, I, yeah okay of yeah. course but again again that's why I, my answer to that is it depends on the case like it, like well yeah in terms so, of the law that's the way the law wait yeah out. so in terms of my i don't want to talk judgment, about yeah, I don't want to talk about the law. I'm just saying that in this case where yeah. he sees the community of Kenosha, he feels like he belongs mm -hmm. to the community. If he sees that his community is being torched and business is being destroyed and somebody puts out a call like, hey, there's anybody that just wants to have like a small show of force so that people go in another neighborhood or whatever. Like, could you please come by and help or whatever? If he responded to that call, do you think that he has like moral standing to be there? Well, no, because like it's not his community. It, you, what do you, wait, who are you to say that? that? It, huh. Well, exactly. That that comes from both of us, right? Well, no, like, he was literally seen... a lifeguard there. I, I, it seems to me that like that seemed to be his community. Like he he had like roots in that community. I think that there were like literally like um, uh, Snapchat stories earlier of him like scrubbing like graffiti off of walls and shit in that area and whatnot. Like he was, yeah. Like there there was footage of that too. Yeah, and like him going around being a medic. I, I like I saw the entire string of the New York Times article that you posted. Mm -hmm. There was also in those same videos, by the way, there was clips of him walking up to other members saying saying hey by the way do you guys need medical attention mm -hmm. and then they would respond with i remember you you were the one who was like pointing the gun at us like uh, i you know i wanted to play that clip as well um but i don't think that he's completely innocent like the idea that like th that's a strange narrative to me to think i'm not asking kid... yeah so again i'm trying this is what i'm trying to so like when you say he's not completely innocent i think that there are i hate to use the rape example but there are women that get raped that are completely innocent but that doesn't mean that they should have been raped and they have no moral standing to oppose that right it's possible that he made decisions that were poor and it's possible that he even did things that um were um immoral potentially but that doesn't mean that he should have submitted himself to attackers that's why i'm trying to keep all of these things like completely disaggregated and be like very specific and very particular with exactly what I'm talking about. So my, so my, to refocus, my very specific question is: sure. is if he did feel, no, no, I'm not saying like, oh, well, he wasn't part of it. I'm saying if he did feel like he was part of that community, do you think that it's sure. okay for him to respond to a call for help to defend somebody else's property? To defend, yes, not with lethal. 
Well, basically, and I, I don't think he has a right to kill people for other people's property. So could I jump in? Yeah, for go. Two sure. Seconds, yeah, sorry. Maybe go for um, it. Um, so like I, I think we can set aside the community thing maybe so what, what destiny is saying is that rural communities are probably going to look at that word very differently and you may be surprised at how widespread their idea of what a community is compared to your own and it's easy to see like similarities and people you love and all those sorts of things across a, a pretty wide area like e even where i live in california if i lived in northern california uh, for a time and i had some connection to that place even if it's hundreds or thousands of miles away if i went there and defended that i think you could call that a community I, I think what we really want to focus on is this like defense of property thing because also he didn't kill somebody in defense of a building he killed someone in defense of his personhood the attacker wasn't just breaking windows on a building and he shot and killed them and that was the only thing he was doing he shot and killed somebody that was charging after him which is why the self-defense well, we argument yet, right? comes like, up. Like the the earliest points of the footage we know is that there was a gunshot first, and then he fired a gunshot. Right? We don't know what yeah, was happening so before that, though. What what led if, up to that? Uh, that that's a if huge we if. don't know that, then we can't. At the same time, we can't talk about this community idea or the justifications for him being there, right? Because we also don't have the answers to that. So we kind of have to limit ourselves to like what we saw in the well, video. Sure. So if, then... if we ignore the community aspect altogether, then I would posit that I don't think it was appropriate for him to enter that area with a gun, like an open brandished gun, especially if you aren't even allowed to own that gun. Well, but there's... Okay. These are separate... Well, we're in terms of like owning the gun or not allowed to own the gun, those are like separate conversations as well, right? Sure, absolutely. But I mean, this whole thing, like none of these are just isolated instances. Like I know, I know we want to break it down into like, do you think X or Y? Yes or no. Do you think X or Y? Yes or no. Well, the reason and then why, based on that, but it's it's such a multifaceted but issue. It's, like, well, none of yeah, this yeah, happens I, in I vacuum, understand. But right? when we say multifacet, that single yeah. facet's coming together to form the multifacet. So we have to understand absolutely, like yeah. our singular points of agreement or contention before we can talk about the multifaceted argument. That's why I'm trying to like figure out like, so for instance, if you tell me, well, I think he could defend it if even if it's like a, a friend store, okay, cool, then we move on to the next part. But if we disagree here, well, then we have to solve it here. We can't, it feels like every time we have a fundamental disagreement, we're making this strange and vague appeal to the multi multifaceted part of the conversation, but we haven't even gotten to that part yet. I'm just trying to figure out mm -hmm. like can we show up to defend like our like community property can that concept or that thing even be morally justified right there like that's what i'm trying to figure out it depends on the property depends on the community depends on the moment i don't think lethal force applies to, to any scenario book I smarts i'm falling I'm, I'm falling down the hole i Okay. I, I understand that. So I don't think you're being super <laughs> flexible on this. So is there a principle that you have then that is just going to go over everything else serves? Like th there's a principle of not wanting to harm other people. That's just it's always going to turn this argument one way or the other for you, because it sounds like it doesn't matter how many other things we do as far as changing the definition of community or these other things, because you have other reasons for not siding with the attacker, not understanding why what happened happened. And like mm -hmm. Destiny is saying, if it's a multifaceted thing, then we have to start with like one or two facets and find some kind of common agreement on it before we can move into like uh, general arguments about the entire thing. I completely like, I, understand the, uh, the anger management coach now this is uh was, was well this is nice i i get it because i know i know destiny be screaming at me right now okay um destiny when, when it comes down to it at, at the end of the day though like my my biggest concern is like i told you this at the very start of this you know way more about um you know moralism about philosophy like i i would be woefully out of my depth if i was here, like to come here and be like hey destiny i want to talk to you about you know uh, all different kinds of like normative claims uh prescriptive statements stuff like that I'm not going to try and do that. To me, what I've always said to you when we have these kind of talks is, why are we focusing on these certain things? Now, you want to focus on this because you want to extrapolate it and understand why each part of it is like builds a bigger tapestry, right? Like if, if mm -hmm. I try to talk about a big pi picture issue, you always say, let's get down to the fundamental moralistic root of this and why you believe X, right? Yeah. Usually, typically. Yeah. yeah. And like, that's fine. On the other end, of this, uh, on the other end of the aisle, what I was basically wondering this whole time is why is this the point that we're hyper focusing on when it comes to whether or not well, this one individual because was justified? The, because in... the problem is that like we need to build out our larger, broader prescriptions. 
from these singular mm -hmm. claims. So for instance, depending on how long this conversation goes, if you're going to give me this point of contention here, then I can, sure. if, if you're going to sit here and tell me that like you can, or I'm sorry, that sounded really aggressive. If you're going to make the statement Not that you can't defend like other people's property, then I might ask you like, do you think it's immoral when protesters go to other communities to protest in other communities? Because that's happening quite yeah. a lot right now where people will go to other cities even to protest. Would you are, and I, I'm very curious if you would say that all of those people are immoral for showing up in other communities and breaking laws, which they often do by staying out past curfew. Or do you think that's okay mm -hmm. when they do it? No, no, no. It's, it's not like one law for me, one law for thee. Wait, so you what? so you think that BLM protesters that go to other cities to protest, you think that they don't have a right to do that? They should only protest in their own city? No, <laughs> that's not what I was saying at all. I mean, you have a right to protest. They, they absolutely do. They don't have a right to go there and kill people. That's different. They don't have a right to go there and defend other people's property and shoot them okay, in the wait, process. Wait. Yeah, so now it sounds like your problem isn't going to other communities. It sounds like your problem is just like doing this action, period. That even if he was defending something in his murdering own murdering people for property, yeah, I, I do have a problem with murdering people for property. And, and and again, it becomes case specific because you were talking to me about whether or not it's you defending your own property. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to catch up. Okay, I'm sorry. But when yeah. you say so, all of those things that you just said don't matter. It doesn't matter if it's your own property or not. You just said that it's bad to murder people for defending no, property. Oh, period. No, no. <laughs> Wow, you're good at that. No, I'm, I'm not saying that Wait, at all. That's, I'm not like, good at that. I'm not good. I'm no, that's exactly what you just said. That is exactly what you just said. Uh, so did, he's saying that there is some metric for figuring that out that he's yes, not he, going to define in any concrete way. So he's just going to say it's going to be a case by case, no matter what. <laughs> and that these case, well, hold on. So I, I'm going to be more yes. fair to you at the end. Yeah, no, so it, like when, when we're talking about taking the life away from somebody else wouldn't you say serfs that that's a big enough decision that like creating any kind of moral framework for understanding the way you would behave is kind of like foolhardy or um, is that I, not I would really say, I, well i would we're talking about like moral relativism right like these no. that's why i'm saying this they can't apply to every no. single scenario like every single one has to be different yeah there's, there's so we can understand that well while yeah. talking about this specific one. And so he's trying to break this down into different components. Like, okay, wait, is his problem the community component? Is his problem the defending property component? Is his problem like, it's, it's, so it's we're trying to narrow- It's all of the above. Well, it's all of the above though. Okay, and, and so, you tell me again, Lens, is there scenarios in which you should be able to go to other communities and, and join protests? Yes, you should. Yeah. Going so, to another so, community so and protesting start, is, is different though. It's let's different start than going there. to another area. Sorry? So, it, beyond the the shooting people thing we're not saying that when you say that that's justifying then shootings because we justify going to other communities for protests what we're trying to do is pin down the idea that like the way that people perceive communities can be pretty broad and that you can travel to other places to protest because you identify them as your community even if they're about as far as the kenosha shooter was from this place so we're just trying to nail that part down first to at least understand that he did think that was his community and it's reasonable to think that right because we can see the same thing with BLM protesters traveling to wherever they can do their protest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I think it's fair for him to want to travel to another area of the U.S. I, I never once denied that. That's that's completely and, fine. And identifying it as your community, right? Well, are you asking, do I personally believe that he identified Kenosha as his community? Because Can you understand defining uh, Can I understand why? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Okay. Yes. Now, can we take that a step further and have you give some good faith to the shooter that he, honest to God, perceived that Kenosha was his community? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So that does that bring us any closer, Destiny, or do you feel like that's meaningless? I, if you're asking me in good faith, is there is there a version of the story where that could be true? Yes, there could be. I don't personally believe okay. that, but I'm, I'll give you that in good faith. There could be that version. Okay. Yeah. So if we could work off of that moving forward, and then we kind of move on to the idea of defending property itself. Now, personally, and this may differ from Destiny, I think you could just give a concession on this and say, okay, it may not be okay to defend property with lethal force. Even if we assume that he wasn't defending property with lethal force in this situation, we don't have enough evidence to say that that's what was happening. So this harping on that aspect of his intentions is kind of divorced from what we can see in the videos. Would you agree with that, Serps, or...? Well, I thought you were asking Destiny if, if he thought that was okay. Oh, I, I mean, do you think it's helpful that we fix the definition on community destiny, or do you think that that's not helpful? I mean, I think we got the community thing down. I guess, like, what the problem is that, like, by saying that, like, that, like we all, we, all, we all appeal to 
higher principles, even if we don't realize it, right? Like, so for instance, when you say it's a case by case basis, you, there's some rules that you're thinking of. Like th there are in there. I'm trying to figure out what the rules in your head are so that we can start to hammer out like whether or not this particular scenario was okay or not okay. Like you, when you say like it's on a case by case basis, there's still some broader rule that you're appealing to for like this is right, this is wrong. Like I'm willing to bet that you would probably say that like shooting somebody that presents no threat to you that's standing in the street, that's always wrong. So we can build off of that. And I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out what those like fundamental rules are, I guess. So, sure. So, yeah, we could start with, can you uh, defend yourself against, like, harm that'll cause you uh, bodily harm to the point of death mm -hmm. and or personal injury? Yes, you can. I'm, I'm, I'm for that. Okay, yeah. Can, can you defend? So, if, mm -hmm. if you were defending your home or your house and mm -hmm. you feel that the people attacking you are about to, mm -hmm. again, harm you to the point of death, yes, you can defend yourself. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Well, then, okay, so I feel like we already went over this, then, but I guess to retread old ground, do you feel like you have a right to defend your property? Let's say that you have a family-owned business, your great-great-grandfather. To, 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 oh, yeah, to a ahead. degree. What does that mean, to, to a degree? degree? Well, is someone coming up to me and saying, hey, by the way, I'm going to break into the store. So, okay, this is never how it's going to play out. I understand that. It's never going to play out like this. This is going to sound cartoonish. Sure, I'll, get, I'll, give, you, I'll, get, I'll give you a scenario. You're sitting on top of your yes. roof with a, with a long rifle. Sure. And you see five yeah, yeah. people and, approaching and, your building, and they're holding yes. Molotov cocktails. And you say, hey, stop don't come any closer that's you're past my property already if you come any closer i'm going to shoot you do you think you have a right to okay, shoot so, them or so no? in so in so in this version the mm -hmm. Molotov cocktails if they hit the house could burn me alive so yeah i'm, I'm defending no, my life let's say that point. you can or but no no not your life. not your house this is your business it's just your business that you own so you're mm -hmm. on top of the roof of your business yeah yeah with my rifle. yeah people they've, are they've approaching the... yeah and they're ready to throw it and torch your 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 business do you think you have a right to okay, shoot so, those people uh, yeah Okay, but in your in this thought scenario, I think my life is in danger. So yes, I, I would no. Defend okay, it. you you, you want to get to the root of it. You want to get to property, right? I so if, let's say that there I is know, a I helicopter know. that's flying behind you, and you can jump on it at any point in time, and the helicopter will fly you away. Okay. It's the Men in Black sure. one, and it's but they don't have any guns on the helicopter. But there's a helicopter nice. that you can fly away. Okay, so the helicopter's back there. Now do you have a right to defend your property, assuming you can fly away if you want to, or do you? Yeah. Yeah, so I, in that scenario, I guess I'd fly away. I, I don't want to die. I don't want to die for. I'm not asking you what you would want to do personally. What I'm asking is, saying, you, are they morally justified in, in killing? In them? killing the people that are threatening their property, do they have to forfeit their property to the attackers and let them destroy it, or do they have a right to defend the property using lethal force? Um, I guess I would say no. They 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 don't have the right to kill their attackers. Okay. Their so then. You believe then, um, so now, now, okay, so the, the general rule that I believe you've given me, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not trying, to, we I'm not trying sure. to pigeonhole you, is that you don't think that you can ever kill, like take the life of another person that's threatening to and seems to have the means and motive to destroy a piece of business property, right? But, but I'm not personally going to be damaged. I'm not... I'm only so talking about the me. property. Yeah, you are invincible. Okay. You okay, possess a suit of armor. I don't, I, that, I don't feel. I don't. Feel, I don't feel yeah. you're justified in killing someone. Okay, you're that. Iron Man. Okay, sure. Okay. Now, so then historically, <laughs> uh, okay. So historically, I'm going to ask then: in the case of like sure. the L.A. riots, or in the case of like Black Wall Street, would you argue that people that were defending their property there with lethal force, they were morally in the wrong? That they should have backed away and just ceded that to rioters. So, so the people who's like in the target that we're getting broken into, for example? No, I'm not talking about the target. I'm talking about the Koreans that own their own businesses, or I'm talking about mm -hmm. the African Americans that ran businesses on Black Wall Street, like the single largest sure. destruction of black property in US history. Should these people, um, if they have the opportunity and means to defend their property, should they back off and let rioters destroy it and not defend it using lethal force? If defending it would mean killing the attackers. Or endangering their own lives. Sure. E even if, okay. even if, then, like, then even if still, they, well, still no. yeah. even if they could, so they, so then no, they can't defend their property. Th this isn't a trap. You can answer can, that. Can, this is they a... can defend it. I just, I, I, I just don't think it's a lethal force. I don't think you should kill another human being over an item. That's, that's kind of my thing. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's what I'm saying is he has that principle. So that's going to jump over any other logical thing or anything else because that seems to be like a, a base to like judging the outcome of the situation. Like, okay, but was there a way for me to get out without being harmed or like without dying? Like if that's the case, if that option is on the table, then I wouldn't take the option that would involve killing somebody because he's drawn a line there, right, Surf, sir? Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's fair. That's really fair. Okay. 
So then if we can move this away from the idea of the property defense at all, and we just cut this to like, well, if that dude threatened Kyle's life and Kyle thought that it was reasonable that that dude could get the gun away from him, do you think it was reasonable for Kyle to respond by shooting him? Um, so we're going to take out all the rest of the scenario. We're not going to say sure. that he crossed state lines at a gun. Yeah, of course. If, if someone is about to kill okay. you, you have a right to defend yourself against that. Yes. And based on the video, if we set aside any other information we have about his intentions or anything else, given that that dude was running at him and he seemed to be retreating as much as he could, um, and then he turned around against this guy and then fired on him, wouldn't you agree that it's reasonable he thought, if this dude gets the gun from me, this is going to be like a situation where my life could be in danger? Could you see how you could think that? Uh, I could see how you could think that, yeah. Okay. I've said that from the start. Like when okay. when he's being attacked by those two individuals, like I I think they're grabbing his gun to disarm him. But he probably yeah. thought at that moment in time his life is threatened. But I think he's foregoed yeah. all of that morality when he entered again a separate area with a firearm, brandishing it, crossing state lines, all the kind of stuff. Like he put himself in that environment to cause harm. Mm. Can I te can harm. I test that argument with some extreme sure. hypotheticals? Yeah. <clears throat> do you think that if some do you think that if um um. Oh, we're on the we're on the rape train tonight, boys. Okay. Do you think that if a woman goes to a party where there are like guys that she knows like might have like a proclivity for sexual assault, that if she goes there and she case takes a gun with her, do you think that she is like provoking like some sort of like deadly action by doing that, and that she's kind of morally responsible for killing any man that tries to like assault her? So is she brandishing the gun and saying no one can enter the party, uh, or she'll shoot them? No, she's brandishing the gun and saying no one can enter my vagina, or I'll shoot you. And then they try to assault her yeah yeah she can shoot them why so but why is it again okay? to, for that scenario to be comparable because you, you're making a scenario you, you want to do these extreme analogies and you want to turn them into rape analogies that's fine but if you want to do that you should actually add the qualifiers that make this pertinent right so she should be standing brandishing the weapon in front of the party saying you can't enter i'm protecting this it's my party well the party well, but no no that no no because the party could be the streets Right, you can walk in the streets, okay. and the party in the, the 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 gas station that these people were standing next to would be the equivalent to like her body, right? This is like the area that mm -hmm. she is defending, that she probably has a right to defend, right? I would argue mm -hmm. Kyle probably has a right to defend um, whatever property that is you're not supposed to be next to because it's trespassing, or whatever. So that would be like the the analogy. Yeah, but the, <laughs> I, I don't know. Okay, um, so so basically, what this is is you want to get you want to get a gotcha on a rape analogy because obviously the, it's just one of two bad scenarios. Lance is going to stand here and he's going to say, well, yeah, I'm actually totally fine with that. And you're going to be like, well, yeah, that's disgusting. Shame on you. Or you're going to be like, well, yeah, so I see you see things the same way as me if you understand it from this other viewpoint, right? Well, that's, yeah, but that's because I think people have a right to defend themselves. <laughs> And I don't think I don't think that well, you, you, have, you I don't think, think people well, have a right to themselves over property. So well, in no, that no, no, case, no, no. We're, are, moved, are you implying moved, the property is her? So we've we've moved off of property. We're just talking about self defense. I don't think that you making a few. Oh, bad... But I agree with you on self defense. No, 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 I, no. I have from the start. But you, I, no, no, I, no, I but you're you saying you're saying making some poor decisions prior to being in a self defense scenario invalidates your ability to defend yourself. So, for instance, Kyle crossing state lines with a firearm or whatever, whether legal or illegal, I'm still not sure if he did or not. But let's say that he did that. That sure. now all of a sudden anybody. Can aggress on his life and if he defends himself well that's still his fault because he put himself in that situation which would be we would say not that any a, no, uh -huh. no not that so all of a sudden anyone has a right to aggress on his life but that he has put himself in harm's way so he's foregoing like i think even under the legal the legal stature of not that talking area i'm oh, sorry, sorry okay fine moral um yeah i i don't think he's morally justified in self-defense if he's putting himself into that environment where he's actively going to be like did he point a gun at someone? Did he say, get out of the way? Did he say, we don't have any evidence of any of that happening we whatsoever, right? We, we have right? no idea. Mm -hmm. So we're so assuming it has happened. charging at you, mm -hmm. but, but again, if, if you want to get down to the root of what I think here, you're like, Lance, if someone charges at me, uh, do I have a right to, to shoot them? Yes, you do. Okay, but you're, it makes, you're making it sound like, well, it depends on if you put yourself in an area that you shouldn't have been in and then you don't have, like, even if you're not aggressing on anybody. Because all the arguments that you're making, to turn it back to the woman example, is like, well, you know, what was she wearing? You know, did well, she go okay, to the party? Okay, well, like, why did she do that? Like, sure, should sure, she have sure, been sure. there? Okay, so like, yeah. I, I, got, I got this. Okay, so in that case, wouldn't both people be justified? Wouldn't the person be justified who was going to attack him because he thought he was about to be attacked? And then the person who he's attacking has a justification to shoot him as well because they both thought they were about to attack each other. That's totally possible, yeah. Yeah. So I'm glad we agree. That he was he killed the guy in self defense. <laughs> that he could have, depending on what had happened before. Yeah, Just of be course. Good faith. <laughs>
Yeah, I mean, both people, especially in the second and third and fourth shooting, I think, like, in that case, everybody could have theoretically been justified if the second and third person thought that the first killing was, like, uh, like unlawful or the guy was just murdering people. Sure. Can I ask something? Yeah. Why the white nationalist aspect? That's that's the part of this that doesn't make any sense. Is the, are, is Wait, this what white means? nationalist aspect? What? The, like, uh, you know the clip that's going around, right? The one where, like, it, uh, the riots have to stop. And because the riots have to stop, mm -hmm. like, we need to get, uh, if it takes a couple of white nationalists, like, I'm sorry, I'm paraphrasing here. Yeah, but, like, so basically if, what I said is that, like, if the, I think that the, I, so personally, I think the only way Trump wins the election is through riots like this. And I think that we are way, way, way past the time where rioting, I don't think rioting against businesses was ever acceptable. Um, and we're way past the time where it's still going on. And it, it is just so unbelievably fucking horrible and disgusting that there are people that actually unironically defend rioting against private businesses. It's crazy to me. And that if the police can't stop it, and if we don't want the feds to come in and stop it, then if white militiamen want to gather up in neighborhoods and like defend property or businesses or whatever, and that keeps people from blowing shit up, then fine, then so be it. If that's what it takes to stop it, then sure. But don't you think that it's adding way more gasoline to the fire? I think that the fire is already vicious. lit and the protesters, I'm not, not the protesters, the rioters are already adding gasoline. If this is what it takes to stop it, then so be it. But you don't genuinely believe that could stop it. Like, you have to understand that that's just going to be more instigation. Like, if all of a sudden there's all this racially charged antagonism uh, taking place, if we send in militias and especially white nationalists, like, you know, full on. Okay, first of all, I uh, reject the framing of white nationalists. Every single Blue okay. Lives Matter person, every single, like, white, like, redneck or whatever, is not a white nationalist. I totally reject sure, that Sure, but, yeah. but, uh, right, but I'm referring to your clip where you specifically said white nationalists. I don't know if I did or not. But I, am, I yeah, might have being hyperbolic. Um, yeah, I don't know if I did or not. But um, regardless, like, I, I mean, even if I guess, even if it was white nationalists, like, if all they're doing is defending property, then that's fine. Okay, literally but every single thing, person right? in like, my they, chat they, is screaming. Hold on, real quick. Almost every single person in my chat is saying I did not say white nationalists. I said rednecks. Okay, okay, fair yeah. enough. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Um, yeah, because they generally Should don't I... support white nationalists. But um, I said rednecks. Okay. okay. Which are not white nationalists. No, but, I, yeah. I have not said you support white nationalists, but I'm saying this. Hold on, wait. You clip. literally just said that I said that yeah, I support yeah, white right. nationalists coming in to defend communities. That's what you said. You just said. <laughs> yeah, that, right? I said you said it in that clip. Okay, yeah. Whether or not I, you oh, yeah. whether or not you believe that. Sure. I asked you. I said, are, are you memeing too close to the sun? I don't okay. genuinely think that you sure. believe that that like, I understand. that I'm just Wakanda being meme I'm just being is in yeah. good taste, okay, right? Like you did that. You're doing this as bait, right? Like it's it's this it's part of it. No, nothing that I said was bait. If, it, if militia okay. people want to gather and defend property, especially against rioters, I 100% support them doing that if they want to do that. And it, it doesn't matter what the militia are. Could they, they could be like three percenters. Yeah, I mean, they, I, why should it matter? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Of course, they can do whatever they want. Well, because each militia, they're, like, they're not all the same, right? Some have a lot of different goals. As long as, but, what but they're do as, long as all they're doing is defending property, they could literally be Nazis. I don't care. There there's a hot clip, yeah. I guess, for you. But yeah, I don't care. As long as all they're doing is lawful <sighs> like defending property, I don't care what their ideology or whatever it is. Okay, well, then don't you think then, because I, you probably want the same thing as me, right? You don't want there to be riots anymore. You don't want there to be like Correct. You know, violence yes. and destruction. Of course. Fine. If we don't want the same thing, sending Nazis in there isn't going to solve that. That's going to make it infinitely worse. Like that, that is going to make things so much more dangerous to have armed Nazis on the streets. In, in, I mean, in, I don't like, know. Maybe it'll. I don't know. Maybe it'll discourage people from going down. I mean, like I'm pretty sure that there have been like mm -hmm. lots of clips of people that have guns out in certain areas where protesters are going in other directions because they don't want to like intermingle with people that are standing outside with rifles. Like I've seen like multiple videos of that happening. Oh. Hold on. I think this is bad faith. I got to throw a yellow flag in here. What he's saying, I think, is an easy give that you can understand that, like, if specifically as Serfs is saying it, which was a mischaracterization of you anyways, but we'll set that aside. If what Serfs is saying is true, that we marched in a bunch of Nazis with guns, you can agree that, like, the reasonable person would assume that that would make the situation worse. Uh, yeah, well, if I if I do that give, yeah, I guess. I'm sorry. To clarify, okay. the vast majority... Yeah, well, I should say this because not, because lefties think that 99% of white people are Nazis in America anyway, I guess. Yeah, obviously marching in a bunch of Nazis or... Well, you, the fact that you characterize like, these people as white nationalists or whatever is kind of strange. Um, or, no, no, yeah. I guess it's you said that I said they were white nationalists, which I didn't, but I understand. Um... I, like, I don't think the majority of them are Nazis. I just think that, like, if people around, like, communities and rural communities want to gather and defend their property, I think that that's fine. And I think that I, I think that there's probably something to be said for, like, a lot of armed people standing around property are probably not going to conflict a lot with, uh, with, with rioters. I wouldn't imagine that would happen. I, like, I, I'm just curious how that makes things better, though. 
Like how how sending like if you, like well the idea would be hopefully that people don't go right in those areas that like people stop. But that's not how these things play out historically, right? Like, Isn't it, it, it though? Like it. didn't the Koreans protect their property in, in the areas that they were? Like don't, don't we have a lot of videos of like when there are people that stand in front of buildings with like guns? They like to say that this doesn't work. Doesn't this say like well every single private security in the world like doesn't work? Why do we have bouncers outside of bars? Why do we have any like armed people anywhere ever? Like I mean it probably works to some extent, yeah. Like. Right. So, okay. So most of these protests, when they popped off, what was the catalyst that made them happen? Like almost universally for the past five months, actually. For the past five months? It's like, usually it's like people getting killed by cops. Yeah. Um, and then, so the protests, obviously, they're, they're, they start out as a demand. They're, they're, they're like, it's not just, it, it, it's not, uh, you know, someone gets killed by the police and then next, mm -hmm. the next day there's, there's like, you know, riots and stuff. They start usually as movements, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then those movements grow. And the demands of those movements aren't met. But the problems, the underlying problems, still exist. And, and they still keep getting exacerbated. And, and I mean, we live in a time now where everyone's like, everyone's fucking afraid, right? I mean, you're in the United States and like 185,000 people are dying. Most of them are disproportionately uh, black, indigenous, poor, old. Uh, on That's top fine. Of everything None else, of the, what you've the... said so far justifies destroying privately owned businesses. But keep going. I've never said it did. Okay, and I'm, I'm not someone on here who, who, who goes on the, the streams and says, hey, by the way, go out there and riot. I've never once said that. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm just saying, if you are looking ultimately for something that'll solve these problems, shouldn't we be addressing the problems themselves rather than talking about the individuals such as the Kenosha shooter and whether or not he's justified? In wait, why do we assume we can only like, have like one? Wait, wait, wait. Why do we only assume we can have one conversation at a time? I don't. Okay, but, then but we, we, saying, we can talk. We can talk right about. Now, we can talk about how the conditions of these communities haven't been met yet. To be fair, we haven't even had a legislative session yet. Okay, so we can talk about like how these conditions haven't been met yet. We haven't gotten like met yet. We haven't gotten con um, concessions from legislators yet. Like we can have that conversation, and we can also simultaneously say like, "Hey, rioting is not only bad optics; it's just a shitty thing to do, and we need to not have this happening, and we need to absolutely disavow it. We need to absolutely not support it, and we can't let people trap us into saying that if you don't support the rioters you don't support the protest or blm that's like when republicans say if you don't support the military and and u.s foreign policy you don't support the troops i think we should reject that wholeheartedly i can support blm and the where, protesters without supporting the rioters where are you hearing that like who has told you that you can only support this if you support rioters a t well a ton of people online are, are tweeting it constantly are saying things that we have to that if you even uh, if you even like support to be fair i guess maybe it could just be but i'd have to like pull up like the massive engagements on the tweets wait so actually i'm curious then will you right now those, wait, wait, wait 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 real quick but that's will the, you disavow okay, sure, sure, will yeah, you right. disavow all rioting right now will you tell me unequivocally that rioting against privately owned businesses is wrong yeah of course oh cool okay well then at least we agree on that i guess awesome <laughs> no, I've never once said, hey, I'm for the riots, but I have said I understand the riots in the sense that, like, if you're talking about an incredibly, uh, I don't know, a, a group of Americans who have been just overwhelmingly fucked by society, whether it starts out from slavery all the way through Jim Crow, uh, through redlining, not being able to accrue wealth, uh, to just like uh, the industrial pl uh, prison complex, all these things, you get to a point now where life and everything has pushed them to the utter brink uh like uh, some of it is a cry for help. Like some of it is definitely like, please fucking notice us. We we have been, uh, you know, disproportionately affected by so many of these systems for so long that this shit is like, I I don't think everyone goes into Target like you know, uh, uh, anarchy. You know, I, I'm I'm here to steal a television. Like a lot of people are stealing things they probably needed, and a lot of other people were stealing things because they were like, I've been just so fucked over by every you know way shape and form of society like it's it's not just like i condemn it i i say don't do this it's probably going to negative negatively impact your movement but at the same time i don't think they're doing it because they're all anarchists or they're all jokers or they all just want to see the world burn um yeah i mean i don't think i necessarily disagree with that but um yeah i mean like i understand why people do a whole bunch of horrible shit but i still condemn the horrible shit um yeah did you have the same views about the hong kong protests out of curiosity um absolutely not oh okay why why is that because i think protesting against the government is a wonderful thing but i'd say the same thing in america too if you want to burn a cop car oh. or destroy a federal house or whatever then god bless go do okay. it but that's way that's different absolutely. than destroying private property mm -hmm. i totally agree with you did mm -hmm. you know in the hong kong protest there was an inordinate amount mm -hmm. of private property destroyed sure like a fuck ton well in the yeah. event that private property is destroyed i wouldn't support that private property being destroyed but as i said before just because i support protests doesn't mean i have to support riots yeah, okay, fair. Awesome. 
Also, I'm not sure if that's true. I'm actually fuck. Now I have to think about that because I'm no. not. Oh, you're, you're not sure whether you support that or whether or not it happened. The thing about like a lot of private property being destroyed. I read a lot of that on like super lefty subs that I'm pretty sure were like closet fucking China apologists. So I don't actually know if that was true or not. That's the only place I've seen that claim before. It's possible it's true. I'm just I don't like to make that concession when I know there are a bunch of tankies listening. Um, but yeah. from, from friends of so, mine. Well, okay. That... Here's the, here's the fucked up thing. This thing is that like I battle the tankies as much as you do. Maybe more sometimes. I feel I don't know. Maybe it's just because like they're a very loud vocal group online. Mm -hmm. I'm totally fine with you exposing uh, Caleb Mopin as as a grifter or Joshua for Congress as a grifter. Yeah, I think you because, do. Yeah. Again, I I I think they are grifters. I, I think you expose them. Mm -hmm. Um, the reason I take a huge problem with this is I don't understand why, you know. Both of us with platforms, you with an immensely bigger one than me, why we're focusing on the Kenosha shooter and whether he's morally justified well, so like, or he does the interesting over thing, the much larger yeah, issue. So this is the issue that I deal with, okay? Like when I when my community, um, and I understand everything is different. When my community has certain beliefs that bother me, um, I will go to war with my community to make sure that they resemble my beliefs, right? So over the course of this conversation, I'm curious, what percentage of your chat do you think supports rioting? Because so like I've had your chat up the whole time and like I'm seeing things like so this guy's like what about businesses that materially support cops um, or like oh, this guy you're, doing again. you're, you're talking to me destiny right? no no like, I, I, you, I understand no no I understand that I'm talking to you but so I guess like oh, I, is I'm, there I'm people just, who are going to support writing in my in my audience probably probably but do, do you think that yeah. it's going to be like a negligible part or do you think it's going to be like a, a decent chunk of them are going to support riots. Uh, I think if they're reflecting my views, they probably mm -hmm. don't support riots. No, I don't. I, I'll be honest. I don't know a lot of people who do support riots outside of maybe like some fringe lefties that you've been dealing with. But like, I don't know a lot of people who go on, turn the camera on and are like, burn your city to the ground, comrades. Now we must achieve the one true unity. No one is saying that. Like, that's not Wait, a message. Oh, my God. I feel like I literally saw. Was it an NBA player that literally tweeted burn it all down when that Minnesota apartment building was being torched? The one under concern. Didn't he literally tweet out burn it all down? Like, exactly. I think, yeah, he did. Or was it a reporter? I don't know if it was um what. Oh, sorry, what? Sorry, can you can you send it to me? Um, fuck, hold on. It, it was a really famous because later on he was tweeting like, "Why are these rioters in my community? Get them out or whatever." Um, oh, I just assumed it was an NBA player, a player because he's got NBA in his name. Sorry, fuck. I don't fuck. I don't know who plays NBA. Here, this tweet. I'm sending it to you. Can I play the video? Because I'm I'm really curious why I fucked up on what you said, and I don't like. Yeah, if you want to, you have to play it. Go for it. Someone. Okay, mm -hmm. hold on a sec. I want to hear it. Okay, so yeah, you said white redneck dipshit dudes mowing down protesters. Then so be it. Pro white white protest. Do wait wait. Mowing down protesters. White redneck, white mm -hmm. redneck protesters wait. mowing. So w white redneck militias mowing down protesters. So be it. Wait, wait. That's, no, that's no, 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 no. What was the last part? Read the whole thing. I'm never going to let anybody uh, read I'll just part the, of it. Yeah, play <laughs> it and read the whole thing. Okay. Give one second. Play it. I think that they can uh, torch buildings at 10 p.m. At Thank this point, you. They have my fucking blessing. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That because torching buildings at 10 p.m. is a pretty important part of that statement. I don't think there's anything wrong with protesters. I don't think protesters should be but, killed. Okay, but in, in this case, you're like, uh, you're kind of a class reductionist. You're kind of like the ultimate lefty in this respect, right? Because you're looking at possessions over everything. You're looking at the the material condition, the people attaching themselves to these positions, and, and that being one of the reasons why it's justifiable if say white redneck militias came you, you, in you do know that property rights is literally one of like the core tenets of liberalism right i'm sorry i hold on i'm sorry very condescending i didn't mean it but like <laughs> it's not condescending okay. dude i'm used i'm used to you i'm, I'm sorry okay. Me, I'm okay. I, okay but like you when you an anger when you tell me like private property and the defense of that is so that this is literally one of the most core tenets of liberalism. This might be one of the most liberalism ideas in the entirety of the history of liberalism is defending private property, right? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. So I, th I think one of John Locke's first statements was like the right to own property and, is and like property. the cornerstone yes. or whatever of like, yeah, yes. yeah. So yeah. So yeah, I don't think that like saying that people have a right to defend their property, um, especially when that property is literally like can, can, can sometimes amount to um, th their entire livelihoods, their family livelihoods. Um, yeah, I guess to flip that on you, it's strange to me that so many socialists um, screech and cry about material conditions so much, but are so quick to say like, oh, it's just a business. It's just a building. I thought material conditions were really important. Like, would you ever say that to a homeless person? Like, it's just a house. Like, <laughs> very, very good gotcha. Um, I'm not no, trying to gotcha. I'm just, not, I'm, I'm sorry. Hold on. Not. Real quick. Okay, I have yeah. to explain this. 
I'm not trying to gotcha. So when I say, would you say to a homeless person, it's just a house, what I'm really saying mm -hmm. is that statement is kind of ridiculous because material things are, aren't it's just relative. objects. They're, they're actually incredibly important to people. So for instance, having mm -hmm. like a roof over your head, having food to eat, having clothing on you, these are all like material things. And material things mm -hmm. are incredibly important. Sometimes material things are equal to life. So for instance, during the um, coronavirus shutdowns, a lot of people can't work. That's having a massively horrible impact on their material conditions. These, this, the deterioration of these material conditions can lead to the deaths of people. It's absolutely possible. Um, in fact, we would argue that the material conditions that exist today as a result of the massive gap in wealth between wealthiest people and poorest people is leading to the degradation of people's lives or to their actual deaths. So it seems strange to me that if we understand all of that, if we look at it through, if we employ our dialectical materialism, we look through things through a class analysis lens and we can see how sure. much the material conditions can affect the well-being of people's lives that to understand all of that and then to say oh you think that lives are worth property well i mean to some mm -hmm. extent yeah i mean material conditions are really really, so, really important. so if you yeah so if you told me lance would it be okay for you to fend your life-saving medication that you need to take uh at, at you know at the cost of like being attacked or perhaps dying that's different than your saxophone. What about the what about what that's... about what about the business that you run that allows you to buy the mm -hmm. life saving medication? Yeah, so you can. I, I would defend my business if it. Well, okay. So does it sell the life saving medication I have to need? No, but it's. The, but that's what. That's how you. Here, that but... we're not getting deep into the weeds. This is a. Dur no, no. You can't say this is deep into the weeds. That's the capitalist argument. Okay. The socialist would say my material <laughs> you're, conditions. You're using the socialist argument so because I, I unfortunately right? because I've w gone into the weeds so much. I know the socialist argument. But mm -hmm. a socialist would probably say, well, no. Like your happy, your lot in life can be directly and inexorably tied to your material conditions. So if we say, for instance, the ownership of a piece of property which defines your class as a capitalist to some extent, the ownership of a piece of property is generating you money that you use to purchase a life-saving medication. Don't you have a right to defend mm -hmm. that property? Right. So, I mean, by that analysis, the problem would be the system itself, not whether or not you have the moral uh, imperative to defend yourself. Sure, but an individual them. oftentimes can't change an entire system. He might only be able to defend his singular piece of property. Right. Yeah, and and that's where I come from, man. I'm like I'm an intersectionalist. Like I I I, I believe in that. I I, I like I I'm not a class reductionist. I'm I'm saying that that's an unusual take from you because I understand the idea. If you tell me, Lance, um, I I had a part time job and I believe me, buddy, so did I. I. I've worked in so many different fast food places. I know what it's like to buy my own car stereo, install the car. I couldn't install it. I had to pay someone to install it. Uh, I get that car stereo and my car got broken into and I was fucking furious. And I remember afterwards thinking, well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to camp out in my car with a bat and I'm going to try and catch that person because I'm, I'm just so mad about that happening. And, and then years later, taking a reflection, being like, why? Like, why? Like, it, why did I have so much attachment to a physical object that again could be replaced. It, it's not a life saving object. I, okay, I, I, I didn't need it. I, I have to I have to I hear this a lot, okay? And I don't know if it's a different in perspective or I might have just been a special snowflake. I would agree with that now because I can replace any object I own. I don't care. I'm rich. Mm -hmm. Fuck it. But mm -hmm. back then, like that that like maybe it was just the mind that I had but like when you're working a job for 525 an hour when you go and you buy something for like 50 or 60 dollars you literally spent your entire monday and tuesday working for that thing that you had totally like you're trading hours of your life in the most miserable working conditions that you will never get back to have some small little fucking thing that brings you happiness because when you live in those conditions you're not going to school you're never going back to school you have nothing left to look forward to in your life there's no vertical promotion there's no horizontal promotion you're completely fucked so when you are spending the few hours of your life that you can enjoying whatever little pieces of property you've managed to save up for because by the way, your expenses in life might be anywhere from 80 to 120% of the money that you make, right? If somebody steals your shit, like you're losing, it's not just a thing. Like that's a thing that you managed to acquire that you traded like irreplaceable hours of the best years of your life for that you will never get back. That's how I viewed it when people stole my stuff, when I was broke as fuck working, when I was 20, 21 to buy the little few things in life that made me happy. I don't understand how mm -hmm. you can say that they're just things and you can replace them. How do you know you'll ever replace them? So, so uh, of those things, there's a whole, oh, sorry, people keep my, my 
I have to turn off my pop-ups for a second. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, so if I lost, for example, my, my HD, that would be the biggest loss to me. I'd, like, all my projects are on there. It would devastate me. But yes, I, I wouldn't probably shoot someone in order to keep that HD because I could I'd make it again. And yeah, I understand where you're coming from in the sense that, like, th that is the worst possible kind of loss when it is something that you have just worked day in, day out at a shitty minimum wage job, right? So I guess we would be on the same page where we don't want them to have to lose those obje uh, like objects or possessions. And on top of which, I don't want them to be in a place where they are systematically struggling to earn that, like having to do the minimum wage, having, having to work that life. Yeah, and that is what's happening on a much grander scale. Like that, that is the much bigger picture. That. We're hyper-focusing on these small, isolated examples and whether or not it's okay to defend property. An in individual can't fight well, against that. That's, he can't do that. An individual doesn't... If the individual sees somebody stealing something from his car, he doesn't have the ability to say, we should change the whole system so this doesn't bother me so much. Could I jump in for two seconds, sure. maybe? Um, cause like w with the serfs, I get, I get what you're saying. And, and I feel like almost what you want to say is like to pass destiny and, and to pass you as well. Like I get where you're coming from. I know where you, why you're feeling this way about this thing, because the material conditions are such that like, this is way more meaningful to you when you're poor, the few things that you own. And you may be tempted to the point of like murdering somebody else if they threaten that one little thing that you have. But now in hindsight, you kind of realize like, even if I believe that at the time, it wouldn't have been good for me to murder somebody over those small possessions, because at the end of the day, I would want to have made the decision to spare somebody's life over these material things. Because if I took the time to think about it, I would realize that nothing is worth that. Is that kind of where you're coming from, Serfs? Yeah, no, that's fair. Okay. And so it, it, and so when, when we expand that too much and we look at, well, no, because the, this whole system's fucked up. So really, if we're going to talk about this specific circumstance, we need to talk about, like, I would prefer that the system didn't exist that made it this way at all. Like, I get that, but that's not really going to help us. Um, and I in, think, in like... here now, no. But we can... Yeah. Okay, so first off, it's it's not as grandiose... Sorry, as grandiose as me saying, we have to change everything before we can change anything. No, that's that's the opposite. Like, trust me, I'm, I, I'm someone who votes for political parties. I don't always enjoy because i'm pragmatic you know like i i want to help out people in the here now uh, like as quickly as we can my my thing being is that when it comes down to these specific protests these specific uh if you want to call elements of them whether they're, they're blossoming into riots or, or whatnot we can kind of track down the reason why especially the inequity uh, sorry the, the inequality between uh black americans and white americans and and, and destiny I, like you know i'm sure more than anyone about redlining and and you know that's the best way for someone in america to accrue wealth over time right is, is home ownership mm -hmm. ultimately but i'm sure you also know the fact that at this point by about 2054 the median uh, net wealth of a black family could be zero dollars. Like if, if the trends continue, it's going to be net zero dollars. Um, yeah, sure. It's not surprising. Okay. So that being said, the system in, in all its variations is not working for black families. That, yeah, but I'm not talking about the whole system. I'm not even talking about black or white course, right now. I'm just course. talking about... I'm right, just, of course, of course. Yeah. But I'm, I'm saying uh, th these are the catalysts. These are the I, reasons these things keep like exploding, pe popping off, like the the, 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 the the riots, the protests. It's that frustration, that anger, that helplessness. We, we can we can track why. And we can also do things to ameliorate it. Well, is my other yeah, point. but an individual can't. And, and these are like a little bit separated from the, like the, the more individual arguments over defending a piece of property. And more specifically in this case, I just take issue sometimes when people are like, it's just property. Like I think that that's a, like if I could say that now, like I would never die for any piece of property I own because I could replace it instantly. But back when I was mm -hmm. in college, if I was like confronted with somebody that was like, give me my, like, give me your instrument or I'm going to kill you. It's like, all right, well, we're going to fight to the death because I like I can't I can't lose this. This is all I have in life up to this point. And like my best years are now like starting to be behind me. Like, I don't know if I'll ever get another thing like this again. Like now I now looking back on it, I can be like, well, well, Destiny, that's so silly. You're going to become a famous streamer. And now who cares? But like at that time, like. This is like my, this is everything I have in my life. I, I can't just lose this thing to you that wants to steal it from me for no reason. And you're saying that people who say that are being condescending because they don't understand what it is. So like, yeah, it feels like a very, like based around and, and, and I'm not trying to like do like, oh, you're just rich, but it feels like a very middle class thing to say, like, that's just a possession. Like, damn, like if it's like, if you're talking about like my favorite possessions back growing up were like my stereo, my iPod and my saxophone, because music was like the only cool thing I had in life that like felt good to me. And the idea that other people could take that away from me 
for because they were just jerks. And I don't know if I'm ever going to make enough money to buy a saxophone. Fuck, dude, when you're poor, if you get a flat tire, your finances are fucked for six months. Like, I don't know if I'm ever going to save up enough money yeah, to yeah, get any no. of these things again. So, like, yeah, that's like a... Re- I, I completely agree with you. Sure, okay. I completely agree with that, you. So, like, and, yeah, and, when and, you... And, so when I, you, I, I yeah. also... But I also don't think that applies to uh, Kyle Rittenhouse. Like I, I don't, I don't well, think like, I would apply the same thing. Like I don't think could. him going to to, de- to defend the property of uh, either he knew the person or a stranger is the same thing as you and your saxophone. Someone but, pulling your saxophone away. But I think like, it totally think could. Those are very you might scenarios. you might go to a gas station that's owned by like the same family for like four generations, and you know like they're you know their kids. You might go to school with some of them. Like everybody in the community hangs out there. They buy pop. They hang out in front of the store. Like these might be people that you know that you know like their life's work has gone into like maintain. That's not uncommon in like small rural communities where everybody fucking knows each other. Like when you're driving through like some shithole town in Louisiana and you pull over and get gas, like it's not surprising if two people pull over and like, oh shit, what's up, dude? And they like notice each other because everybody knows each other in these towns. Like that. So it's not the idea that when some people act like it's so inconceivable that Kyle could feel some strong attachment to his community that he wants to die over it but then we'll let you like we'll sit here and listen to rap songs where people are literally calling out their neighborhoods like on every other fucking track or whatever like i don't know i i think that that's like totally understandable that people would feel like a ride or die connection to their community and defending like their like like their their their, their legacies i guess to some extent but would you also I... grant that he may not have known them at all I, I mean, I guess that's possible, but it doesn't seem to be the case at all. Like he was, he literally had like they're, they're ties both, in that community. Like, but well, he didn't have ties to that gas station. He, I'm he, pretty he sure that specific to... owner literally was calling out for people to show up and like help protect it. He, he was, but that doesn't mean that he knew who he was. Not you don't not it may or may not have been, but it's part of the community that he lives in. Like it's not like he just went to some well, random sure, place on the other side that's of the a bit planet. nebulous, right? Could, no, like, it's could we, not. Both, both could be true. So, both he, he may have he, they may have been on speaking terms. He may have known his name. He could have no idea who he was. So I think I, I think both of you can be correct here. Like I think Destiny, you could be correct that he views this gas station as an extension of his community. But I also think Serps may be correct in that I don't think he sees the gas station bit of property with nearly the value that we're attributing to it. I don't think he has. No, that I don't think I don't connection. think it's yeah. I don't think it's that. I, would I, if I were to guess, it's probably more like the general idea of the general defense of his community against rioters would be my mm. guess. Okay, but I, I but that, so just yeah. I think mm-hmm. making that specific probably helps the serfs because it seems silly to make the argument. Yeah, that, like, it's that possible that he might not have station. known that specific guy or that specific. Thing. But I think like the general defense of a community that he felt like he had roots in, I, I think that's an easily defensible idea. But yeah, sure, I don't know if he knew the specific gas station owner or whatever. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll like I'll say this right away. Um, if someone is being condescending, and if that was what you were gathering from me to try and tell someone who's poor, like, hey, you can't put value to your possessions. That's not my intent at all. And if that's what it came across as, like, yeah, I would apologize. That's not what I'm trying. I guess to like say. I hear what I what, yeah, I, am, what I am trying to say is that like, it, I don't think Kyle had any attachment to possessions. Like, I I personally would not murder someone for like the record behind me I real quick i, I, I don't care do i never care in an argument when you say i personally because clearly our life situations sure. are very far removed from right people. but we've been doing anecdotes for the last little while i get i get anecdotes too come on well okay but anyways uh so i, I don't think that kyle would have been justified in, in murdering for a, a, someone else's property who he may or may not have known okay um yeah, I mean, like there are other hypotheticals that I could test with, but uh, yeah, I guess. Do Do you think that um, I, I'm I'm curious on this last one. If somebody was coming to set like a dog or cat on fire, do you think you could defend them with lethal force, or do you think that you should just accept that and walk away from it, or do you think a human life can be traded would, for I an would, animal would, life? From from the from the dogs I've had in my life, I'd probably I'd probably defend them to the death. Why do you Why do you think an animal life can be traded but not property? Uh, cause the saxophone isn't sentient. Wait, are you a vegan? No. <laughs> okay. Just curious. We won't go down that road. Okay. <laughs> um, thanks for giving me your anger management, uh, coach. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take it easy, doesn't it? Yep. Fine. Torture your cock and balls must endure. <laughs> Two spaces forward, your cock will be stretched.